Thrill Me. This show is part of the Thrill Me Podcast Network. Experience more on Facebook and YouTube. Hey, what's going on? This is Thomas Nicholas. Welcome to the the Man Man Total Groove with your host, Tomb Tomb Stones on Josh Josh. What's up, everybody? Welcome into a brand new episode of the Metal Groove Podcast. You guys are tapped in, locked in, strapped in to the Thrill Me Podcast Network right here on YouTube and everywhere else that you can find podcasts. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and joining us. It's going to be a really awesome show today. I feel like I haven't done a top 10 songs list in so long. I've been itching to dive back into it. Couldn't think of the right band to get back into it with. Um, But hey, there's this badass band. It just dropped a brand new song a couple days ago. So um, I think it would be a very fitting category for this week. And I also have a very fitting guest for this week's show. It's one of his favorite bands. I mean, he drives around in a car that he calls the Death Batmobile. So if that tells you anything right there, this guy's a pretty big fan of this band. But that band that we're talking about today is a binged sevenfold, massive, massive, just awesome metal band. That's uh, They've been through the ringer, man. A couple eras here now. They've... Uh, a lot of changeover. We're going to talk about all those things that they've been through. But right now, I'm going to introduce to the show a guy I've been hanging out with a lot, actually coming in, you know, talking about doing shows together, man. Hey, man, we might have to be getting this thing back going. But you guys are going to recognize him. He is a not only my brother in real life, but my brother in the Thrill Me Podcast Network. And that is Mr. Review of Rob, man. What is up? What's up, dude? Thank you for having me on your show. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of stuff, maybe teasing some Disnoid stuff coming back. Just yeah. hung out for your show over the weekend. You did a killer show in Myrtle Beach. That well, was it's, awesome. It's such it's been such a long weekend. I forgot that that happened already. That was yesterday, man. But anyways, <laughs> um, and I am. Thank you for the intro, but you forgot one thing. I am the reigning, defending, throw me podcast network champion. <laughs> I, I did that on purpose because I know how you like to toot your own horn. So always toot toot, man. <laughs> cool, man. I'm digging the background. I like the uh, I like the visual you got going on here, sir. Hey. So um, yes. We're talking Avenged Sevenfold this week. Not only are we going to talk about the band, because I feel like they're an important part in metal history. So just talking about the band is a good part. But we're also going to do our top 10 songs, man. I have mine. I know you have yours. Yep. Um, and we're, we're going to talk their brand new song that dropped. So um, so welcome into the show, man. I'm glad you're joining me again. I, I like this. I like having a guest, to be honest with you, man. It makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> there um, you go. So, Not um, everybody can do a show solo like me, right? Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But... um. Avenged Sevenfold, yeah. tell me why you dig them so much. What is it about them that that, that hooked you and why you continue to, to just, uh, you know, fly that flag for them? No, I think it. I think I was introduced to the band at an interesting time because um, I, I was I listen to all kinds of music. And I think around that time I was like in a like a poppy, rappy world. And uh-huh. but I've always loved classic rock and glam metal and all that stuff. But they came around the time, I think. I think you introduced them to me. It's either you or like Madden the video game or NASCAR because I know they were both on there a couple of times. I had the uh, the City of Evil CD. I remember yeah. my the very fr- my first memory of them uh, completely. I can still think of it now as them winning. I think it was Best New Artist in the MTV Video Music Awards. Watching them walk up on stage, the song Backcountry was huge, and yeah. um, I feel like that made me go out and buy that album. So I had the album. Maybe you got it. Maybe. I handed it to you and like, hey, check these guys out. And then uh, kind of went from there. That's exactly how it is. I remember seeing them on TRL, which I'm like, well, this is different. You know, <laughs> what is this rock band that looks like vampires? What's going on here? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because remember they were doing the vampire thing back in the day. Yeah. And yeah, you had the album. We were listening to it on the car ride. And I'm not going to say one of the songs, but there's a song on that album that's like, oh, I freaking love this band. And it's not one of their hits. Okay, it's, cool. It's just, that's the thing I love about Avenged Sevenfold. They have multiple different sounds. And all of it fits like a theatrical vibe. And you know me, I'm a movie guy. So theatrical vibe is what I'm looking for in music a lot of the time. So that's one of the reasons I kind of fell for the band. Yeah, I hear you, man. I um, I feel like they've had their genres. And um, this might be a controversial thing to say or whatever, but um, it feels like they have, they have been, in their span, they have been probably five different bands. You know what I mean? Like that could be five different bands that's, that's put out all those albums. And those songs, um, of course, you have the um, the Rev era, 
Jimmy, freaking rest in peace. One of my all-time favorite drummers. Absolutely love the dude and his style and his playing. You have that era. You have, I don't know if you could count Mike Portnoy as a separate area because that stuff that stuff was still written by Jimmy. You know what I mean? He was playing Jimmy's yeah. part as far as I know. Um, then you have your um, Hail to the King era. Yep. You have your stage era. And then now you have this new thing that's as different as the stage was, this feels different as well. So, man, what, what are your thoughts on how they've been just throughout the years? I love it, man. Um, I'm not a big fan of like the scream of metal. Um, Cause you know, when you're listening to music, you want to sing along and I can't do that. I can't scream <laughs> off, blow my freaking throat out if I try to do that. But that's, that's what I get what you're saying. Their first album's very scream metal. Their second album's a mix where you can see that all where they're starting to change their style. Yeah. See, Evil still a metal feeling album, but it, it introduced some slower songs like Seize the Day. And you're starting to realize the songwriting abilities of the band as well as the musical talent of the band. Yeah. And then you go into the uh, self-titled album, which shows all kinds of different genres of music in that one album from mm -hmm. standard rock and roll metal from them to even a country vibe song to a theatrical crazy song. That's all that stuff. And then going into Nightmare, which was their their tribute to the Rev, following up on the Rev's writings as well as adding their own stuff in there. And, you know, Mike Portnoy enhanced some of the Rev stuff because of what they, they didn't have any much of the Rev left. Like they only had like little demos and stuff like that. Okay. And then, you know, you go into the Hail to the King album, which is a very stripped back, regular classic rock kind of album where mm -hmm. you can see the influences like Metallica and Guns N' Roses and all that throughout that album. Yeah. And then you get into the stage where they're like, okay, we're going into the, let's start making more story wise throughout albums kind of deal. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, it's, that's the great thing about listening to them. I can hit shuffle on them and get all kinds of different stuff. from them. Yeah. So, um, so I dig that, you know, that I'm a big fan of a band that has diversity. So I enjoy when a band can do multiple different things, especially do it well. Um, I feel like when I go to listen to Avenged Sevenfold, um, we're going to be playing that brand new song here in a second, giving our thoughts on it. But I feel like these days, what I'm going, what I'm looking forward to in an Avenged Sevenfold song is a Sinister Gates guitar solo because I know it's going to be awesome. The guy's done phenomenal work throughout all of their albums. And um, the way they harmonize the guitar playing, it's one of my favorite things. I love when guitar players harmonize. That's a big deal with uh, Judas Priest as well. So, um, but saying that, I don't know if they get as much of the hate that Nickelback gets, because I don't know if anybody hates Nickelback as much as the world hates Nickelback. But um, um, yeah, it's, it's Nickelback and Creed seem to be the two most hated bands and nobody will ever tell you why they hate them. I can get why people don't like Creed because Scott Stapp seems like a douchey guy. I get that one. But um, but but let's talk about this event sevenfold and why do they have this bad rap? OK, I wanted to know why, because I've always dug them. Maybe they maybe at one time they were one of my bands I want to go to. I want to hear something, you know, heavy and good right now. Putting yeah. on a bit simple. Now, not so much. Like whenever I go to show you my top tens list, it's very heavy old stuff. You know what okay. I mean? My top songs very heavy on the old stuff. Um, and their, their current stuff is kind of like, it's not for me, but hey, I still recognize the talent. I still see what these guys are doing. I appreciate it. Um, so when I did some Googling about why people don't like a bench sevenfold, it's a lot of, they keep changing. Which, I mean, sometimes, I mean, if you think of artists like Madonna, that always they're, are changing what they do just not only for themselves, but to yeah. just do something different. You know what I mean? I, I can appreciate that. But the gist, maybe the whole gathering of what I was reading was um, metal elitists, which is crappy. I hate when people are like that. Um, they don't like that they change so much. They don't like that they went away from the heavy stuff to try and branch out and do other things. That's what it looks like to me. What, what do you think it is? But I mean, they still have heavy stuff. And I, I, I like what you brought up there, the metal elitists, because, you know, our buddy Zach here at the Thrilling Podcast now, we talked about that on the last episode of Slash Report with every single group has their people in it that are just gatekeepers and all that stuff. Yeah. And metal has that as well. I mean, Metallica changed their style. Yeah. And they're still one of the biggest bands in metal music, but people hated it when that Black Album came out. Uh, I'm sure people hated Use Your Illusion when Guns N' Roses changed their style to more of a piano, keyboardy kind of thing. Um, Linkin Park changed their style. Got a lot of hate for that uh, in the later record. So it's it's a metal elitist thing for sure. Yeah. I got you, man. Cool. So that makes a lot of sense. Uh, speaking of them changing their way and uh, just, you know, kind of upping their... I call it upping their game because I'm a big fan of diversity. So... But speaking of that route, um, they just dropped a brand new song and yeah. um, they have a brand new album. I think I saw the album's coming out in June. So I'm looking forward to see what the, the catalog of that album is going to be. I feel like I'm excited to just see what they put together because it's been a couple years now since the stage, right? 
six or seven years, yeah. Yeah, and then the um the stage is so different. Like I remember when the stage song first came out, I was like, "This is good, man," because it was our first introduction to what Brooks was doing on the drums. Um, yes. Which I'm gonna dive into more about the drummers um, whenever we get back from this. But yeah, I felt like the stage was a very fun. I think they said it was a concept album. This yes. album is probably gonna be a concept on top of a concept wrapped into a concept album. Um, we're gonna see. Um, the, the first song I've only heard it, or the new song I've only heard a couple times. And um, we're going to take a break real quick, man. I want to say shout out Review Rob for joining me. Uh, this is a song Nobody of that Avenged Sevenfold. going to play right now. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about it, man. So stay tight. That was the song Nobody. I'm assuming it's going to be the album opener. I'm not exactly sure yet. That's normally how they how they do their stuff. They um, they release the album opener. Um so, what, anyways, you're the expert, Mr. Revere Rob. What are your thoughts on that particular song? Okay, so I, being a huge fan, I was at work when they were doing the uh, promotion for this, but I had my phone up and set up in front of my computer and just watching yes. the clock count down, getting really excited as it counted down and all that stuff. I'm like, heck yeah, here we go, man. New music video, new song, because we just mentioned the last thing they did was 2016. Like, we haven't had anything since then. And yeah. um, so I listened to it the first time. You know how all of us are like this with a song. First time we listen to it, we're like, we gotta we gotta listen to it a couple more times to let it simmer in. Like yeah. I liked it the first time, but I needed to let it infect my soul. You know what I'm saying? Nice, nice. I like and that. Too. And that's exactly what it ended up doing because that second time I listened, I hit repeat, and I swear I've listened to this song at least a hundred times since it's come out already. Sweet. Like just on repeat. I'm just I just love the vibes of it. I love the Avenge Sevenfold. It's it's got a stagey vibe to it. Okay. Especially during the guitar solo towards the end. It sounds very much like the stage or like the um the last song on that album, which I'm escaping name wise right now, but it's I, I, that's what I got the vibe. And that's what you would hope for. You know, you you okay. would want coming off of the stage. I mean, if a band's putting out this many albums, they're gonna have influences and styles from all their albums coming out. Yeah. And that's what you would expect the first single to be from an album coming after the stage. You're like, okay, it's still gonna be this spacey melodic uh, uh theoretical kind of vibe and that's what i yeah. felt while listening to it rocky uh uh shadows his voice is very raspy in it i don't know if that's because of the latest surgery he had because he's still working on his throat and all that stuff but or maybe it's just the vibe of the song i don't know we'll have to wait to see what else we get there but i know he's been working on his voice and everything but i i really enjoyed it it feels like a classic event song with that stage added to it Cool, man. I, um, I'll i take your word for it. I'll go ahead and say that. I appreciate your thoughts and that you think about it. Um, I didn't. I won't say I noticed um, his, his voice sounded bad because um, I feel like if somebody's voice sounds bad, that's something they could fix in the studio. Um, I'm not whether, saying bad. I'm not saying bad. It just sounds yeah, raspier than normal. Gotcha. Yeah, because yeah, I remember you texting me saying that, that he sounded – something sounded different. I'll go with different instead of bad. Um, I yeah. didn't notice it, so maybe – I feel like the majority of the times I'm putting on an Avenged Sevenfold thing, it's live. So maybe that's what he sounds like. I don't know. But um, but I'll go ahead and just say, I've already said I don't hate the band. I'm not one of those metal elitists. I don't hate, I love Vince Sample. This song's not for me, my friend. I just yeah. listened to it again before cutting it on. And um, like 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 I told you earlier, what I what I listen to, what I want from a Vince Sample is kick-ass drums and an amazing guitar solo, which you get. Hey, man, this song, this song has a killer guitar solo towards the end. Sinister Gates is, is amazing. Freaking drums in this song, boring to me, my friend um it feels, like, it feels like it feels like it's missing it feels like it's missing something um and that might be on purpose this might that might be what they're going for that might be what they want to sound not a bad song but i just don't i didn't dig it i was kind of i, I was more interested in what was going on in, in the music videos because music video was cool of course yeah, yeah yeah everything they had going on with the uh the skeleton walking around checking out stuff i liked i liked the part where he was picking up fake things on the ground and seeing the barcode on them i think that was like a symbol of people trying to buy happiness Yes. Um, so the video yes. to me was super cool. The song was just kind of, you know, like I, just, I, felt, <laughs> I felt like I just wanted something more from it for, for such a long time off. Um, that That's my thoughts on the song. Um, if anybody out there wants to uh, chime in and let us know what they think of that new Avenged Sevenfold song, um, please do it. Because we do know that the internet likes to, uh, to throw their thoughts around. Um, so please, hey man, comment comment down below. Let us know what you thought about it. But I did want to read um, any more thoughts before I jump into this uh, article about the song or what the new album might be. Because I'm sure you probably dug into things a little bit more than I have. Maybe that's just part of what the concept's going to be. I don't know. 
Yeah, I mean, I imagine with an album like Life is But a Dream, there's going to be some kind of vibey, you know, story concept about life on this whole album and how people go through life and deal with life, especially since they're writing it during COVID times and all that. So uh, I'm sure they've got something cooking or they cooked up something very, very interesting to partake in. I hear you, man. Okay, so I'm just going to read a couple Twitter comments right here um, of other people talking about the new song. Uh, first one here is New Events Sevenfold song might be their best work yet. It's interesting. I like that take. Wow. Um, New Events Sevenfold is creepy and I dig it. I like it. It did have a kind of a spooky, creepy vibe. Yeah, I like that. I get that. I get that. Um, what's going on with, new, the, with the New Events Sevenfold song? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I'm guessing they weren't a fan. Avenge Sevenfold, new music after seven years. Let's go, exclamation point. A Vince Sevenfold production is so cool. I love that they are diverse and continue evolving. That's what I'm a big fan of is that diverse and the way they evolve their sound. It's sad to say this, but the new Avenged Sevenfold song is quite bad. Hopefully the album has better tracks. Still hyped about it. We get a giant F. Yeah, love you, Avenged Sevenfold. New Avenged Sevenfold song might be the worst AX7 of all time. Look at that. Look at the, just the, the difference there. Somebody loved it, could be the best ever, and then the next person's like, sucks, worst ever. Um, this, this guy says, Honey, Wake Up, the new Avenged Sevenfold single just dropped, and it is awesome. Somebody just said they could cry. I have unabashedly loved and adored everything Avenged Sevenfold has ever released over the course of their career. This new song is pretty bad. Oof. Um, Avenged Sevenfold just dropped their first new song in seven years, and it was badass. I'm going to stop it there because it just feels like everything is going to be a love it, hate it, love it, hate it, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And um, while I was going through reading those, maybe I just need to hear it a few more times. Because I think the listen I just did with the show, um, it's probably the third time I've heard it. So maybe it needs to grow on me a little bit more. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, you gotta give it some time to grow. I mean, that's kind of how it was with the uh, the stage song last time as well. I needed some time to grow with it. Well, see, the stage to me caught me immediately because this was not only our first album with Brooks, but the drumming in that song is so killer. It's like, oh. Well, I mean, you're a drummer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're a drummer. To be, to be fair, <laughs> that, that's a, that's a true story. Um, there's a, there's one more article I want to share about what M Shadows thinks of the current state of metal and rock and roll. But before I want to before I dive into that, I do I can't talk about a Ben Sevenfold without talking about the drumming, of course. Um, as we said earlier, rest in peace to the Rev Jimmy. Freaking love him. His 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 footwork in particular blows my mind every time I hear him play. Um, he, he, I think I feel like he's this generation's Neil Peart. That's what I think of him. Uh, I just appreciate and respect his playing so much. Um, and he fit exactly what the band needed. Mike Portnoy stepped in perfectly, I felt like. He played the parts exactly like they should have been played for that album. I absolutely loved him as a drummer as well. And I will say, I love and respect what Aaron did with that Hail to the King album. It was simple, but it fit those songs perfectly. You said it earlier, but like um, you could feel their influences, like the Guns N' Roses influence and the Metallica influence, maybe even an ACDC influence, some of those songs. Very simple, strip, straight, stripped down, straight up rock and roll. I love it. I love the um, Hail to the King album. I think it's really good. And um, Brooks Wackerman, incredible drummer. Um, very talented guy. Um, I don't know if I, if I feel his playing coming across in all the songs yet. Maybe it's just something that has to grow on me, man. Do you have any do you have any thoughts on all the different drummers that they've had? Well, I mean, with a name like Wackerman, <laughs> you, you better be a good drummer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whacking them drums. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, obviously the first thing you think about with Avenge is always the Rev. And that amazing – I watch it. I think every month I probably watch that amazing recording video of him doing Almost Easy because it's just so flawless. Like the dude just walks into the studio and just bangs it out. And yeah. It's like, all right, awesome. You know what <laughs> Exactly. That, that was him, you know, yeah. and that was the vibe that you get with him. Freaking anytime I see the So Far Away music video, it messes me up. Like, I didn't uh, know the guy. It wasn't personal to him, but, you know, anytime yeah. I see that, I'm like, you just feel that connection. That music gives you with everybody. You just feel a connection with it and all that stuff. So that's obviously the first thought you go with. Um, Mike Portnoy was amazing. Did fantastic stuff. You know, I mean, what else could you ask for? Aaron, I don't remember what happened with Aaron. I think he was just there for that album and they couldn't do – he couldn't do what they were asking him to do, I think, uh, is what happened there. Uh, if I remember correctly from what I read, they were moving into a style of music that he wasn't comfortable with or something. I think uh, was the, the vibe I understood there. And then, yeah, I, I've liked what Brooks has done. There's some awesome stuff on that stage album that, you know, are deep cuts. But, 
you know, we'll see what this new one brings. But that, that was his first album, and it sounds great. And yeah. trustworthy. He he looks so much different than the rest of the band. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so you gotta get used yeah. to that. But I mean, he played the freaking drums on the metal for Tenacious D, so we already know the guy's metal. So yeah, he's awesome. He's a he's a really good drummer, man. He is. Um. All right, so let's talk about Avenged Sevenfold. What is their stamp in the history of, of metal? Um, I'm going to talk about an article here that M Shadows did. But um, I just want to say there's a short list of bands, in in my opinion, that have a chance to still make the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You know what I mean? I feel like rock. there's so many rock bands that have just come and gone without leaving a great stamp on the music industry that's just been kind of like, I mean, they might as well be, they're glorified pop bands, really. I mean, they're not doing anything special, but there are those few. I mean, Foo Fighters just got in there. I really feel like Linkin Park's going to get in there. And um, Avenged Sevenfold, I feel like they have to get in there, man. And um, I feel like they've, they've done their part. I think they've earned it. I feel like they have made a footprint in metal history. And um, they're one of the few, one of the good. You know what I'm saying? I really like what they do. And, and I hope they get in there. Um, but what do, you, what do you think about them and their stamp on the music industry? And do you think that's one of those bands that deserves to go into the hall? I mean, of course, but. Yeah, I mean, I got to take bias out of here when talking about it because we're talking about a band that's my second favorite band of all time. By the mm-hmm. way, my number one favorite band, not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame either. <laughs> but they don't want to be. Like Nikki's already said, we don't care if we're in there. So, you know, that yeah. doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh, their stamp, to me, I feel like they were the introduction to a new line of metal music. Mm-hmm. Like straight up metal music, not the the new metal rock thing that was going on. Um, yeah. they, were, they were a change of vibe that was going on. You had your Limp Bizkit and Corn rocking. But you had Avenged Sevenfold bringing in the flag back for metal. I think I think they carried the flag back because yeah. most of the people who've carried the flag for metal throughout history has been the bands from the the eighties, and you know exactly. they didn't really have any metal bands from the nineties. You can correct me <laughs> on that, but it was mostly grunge throughout the nineties. Then we get to the end of the nineties into the early two thousands, and here comes Avenged Sevenfold, and you're like, mm-hmm. okay, awesome, let's pick this back up, let's get that going again. Um, I, so I think I don't know what the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's credentials are i think you have to have a number one album or something like that which they have had so you've already got that ranking for them i would say they're influential to a new generation of metal bands for That's sure nice. so they should get in on that vibe but again it's the rock and roll hall of fame so you never <laughs> yeah you, know, you don't know what works there but i mean the food fighters that's a very recent band i mean I, I know they have a history that's probably 20 30 years but it's still a recent band, if you will. So yeah. we're, we're getting close to their era in time. Mm-hmm. And I can't think of any other bands, like you said, that's going to deserve to go in from their decade or from their time. Because it's it's hit and miss. Like, there's no real... I can't think of any bands that are just huge. You know, it's always when a rock band comes out. Oh, Metallica. Okay. <laughs> there's Metallica. And then it feels like Avenged Sevenfold's been that second band. It feels like Metallica... Foo Fighters, Avenged Sevenfold, you know, yeah. and ACDC yep. will show up out of nowhere, and then, you know, it goes back to those three. Hey, I mean, I completely agree with you, and it feels like even whenever they do those those um, those festivals of rock bands, it always feels like it's the the old bands, but they're, I mean, they're supported by some newer unknown bands, but the big bands are always there because there hasn't anybody, there hasn't been anybody to come along and just wave that flag for, for hard rock and heavy metal. I mean, these, these bands are still, because they play good music, they're talented, and um, they're still killing it, man. So, so props to those guys. For, yeah, they um, they, they uh, announced a couple of shows that they're doing. They're doing some festivals right now. I haven't seen like a long, lengthy tour idea mm-hmm. yet for them because obviously if they're coming close. Ah, going, but <laughs> yeah. I have seen them live once and it was amazing. But yeah. um, it's it's like you said. It's normally these huge rock festivals. That's where you know most of the rock bands go. And it's normally like three or four days, and you you can just look at who the headliners are. It's like Rob Zombie and. Uh, kiss one day and then you know uh metallica well metallica not much you know hit and miss but you know they're there and then avenge sevenfolds right there they're always in the mix somewhere and they're the big name because you know this festival's list is like big name big name and a yeah. little bit lower front than a bunch of other names <laughs> it's and like avenge an is always one of those top ones <laughs> yeah there's it's the eye chart you got the big one and then you got all this like it breaks down yeah yeah, yeah. but um, normally going by, going by this interview that good. avenge sevenfold um singer m shadows did analyzing the current state of metal in a new interview shadow said the genre isn't going anywhere but he does feel that there could be a little more innovation that goes back to what they like to do they like to change things up and and, you know have concept albums stuff he explained i think the purely metal scene is always going to be there it's always got a pulse i don't think the innovation is there and i don't think the ability for fans to have an open mind 
when it comes to something that is innovative is there. I think the great songwriting has been lost a little bit. When Metallica came out, there was nothing like it. It seems like a lot of bands in my generation are treading the same waters that a Metallica already done. And I think when you see great artists, a lot of them aren't in the metal scene. He went on to say, there's a lot of great art out there. And I would argue there are some amazing pop, some amazing hip hop, some amazing R&B artists. <laughs> Notice he didn't say country right there. But um, he's just saying that metal will always be around, but it's lacking innovation, it's lacking creativity, and Avenged Sevenfold is all over creativity and innovation. Uh, what do you think about what he what he said in that interview right there? I think you have the greatest rivalry of the last decade going with you and country music. That crap is just hilarious. <laughs> I mean, any shot you can get to take a shot at country music, especially living in South Carolina, is pretty hilarious to me. Yeah. Um, because that's all we really get here. I mean, it's just country yeah. music. But um. I agree with him. It's, it kind of goes back to what we talked about before, and he mentioned it there. It's Metallica and, like, nobody. Like, who well, is – There's there was is one, one more out there that's interesting, still waving the flag, I think, and there's, they're innovative, and that's Slipknot. I feel like Slipknot's on that on that cusp of, of, of as far as yeah. metal as, – as far as our generation's metal legends, you know what I mean? Um, I forgot to bring and them up. I feel like they fit that category. Like, And I know his son has a band, and I've heard one song by them, and they were really good. Yeah. You know, I, I like what I heard. It's very Slipknotty vibe, so obviously. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's like Tenacious D said, you can't kill the metal. It's always going to be there. Exactly. But who is going to carry it? You know, it's not the popular thing anymore. It's not going to be played on TV all the time. I mean, it's a joke at this point when somebody's going to play a Super Bowl that's a rock man. It's not going to happen because, you know, it's all about oh. the big popular artists now. And yeah, I, I don't remember the last rock band that was there. Don't say Maroon 5. They don't count. All right. <laughs> you know, it's it's maybe the Chili Peppers when they performed with Bruno Mars. But like uh, no, no rock bands have done it in a while. And it's yeah. it's a thing where we we're diehards for it. And it has its diehard fan base. But it's like it's not taking off like it used to like again going back to the 80s huge all over the place music right. in general in the 80s was just the biggest thing in the world and yeah. you know you look at it now it's very one genre and let's make it dancey and let's mm -hmm. dj it up and all that stuff like you know yeah. rock music i think is kept alive by the bands from the 80s you still got some 70s and you know all that with aerosmith and all that out there mm -hmm. but for the most part i don't know what new bands you have that's gonna continue it going I, I don't i don't know i don't know man and i agree with what you're saying but i will say that that i feel like that's part of the mission on the show that i try to do is find those new bands i'm always trying to talk to new people with new bands and uh just see how they sound and and see what their drive is man so hopefully one of those people will make it we know white tiger from uk's badass freaking band i was about to say you did a great job with that because you got me hooked on white tiger i downloaded that album right after listening to your show same with um skull fist i was like well, let's ah. freaking go with this man that's pretty awesome you're really good you know we got our buds and true villains down there rocking it as well you know exactly. it, it's out there it just needs its it needs its support it needs to be yes. it needs more backing that's that's what it is, man. Um, metal the metal community is strong. We normally live off a of word of mouth, um. So let's um let's spread the metal pride out there, man. Let's get some of these bands some props. But let's let's dive back into Avenged Sevenfold real quick. I feel like this is a great way to wrap up the show. Um, okay. We're gonna do our top tens. Normally, when I do a top ten list, I play. I say what song it is. I play about a thirty second clip. Not gonna do that this time. But um, but I think we'll go back and forth. I'll probably start because I'm not as big a fan as them mine are probably going to be seen as oh these are these are the uh the singles these are the hits you know what i mean yeah. but it's what i like you have any honorable mentions or anything like that or are you just going I mean, straight to honorable mention is going to be the stage just because i do appreciate the way that song sounds and, and the drum work in it so i that's probably my honorable mention did you have any yeah um doing time that's their guns and rosy song on uh and because it's because you can hear that guns and roses influence yes okay that's uh, and the only other one I had was Natural Born Killer. That song is just freaking amazing. And I love what Mike Portnoy does. He just he's freaking wailing on the drums. All of a sudden, it just stops and he goes, ting. I'm like, yes. I love it. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> That's a lot of fun, man. Okay, so um, so we'll dive in. We'll just go back and forth. I'll say a little bit about why I did the song. You ruined my number 10 already, man. So good job, sir. The, cool. But it is the song Doing Time um, from the Hail to the King album. What I love about that song is, like you said, it's 100% Guns N' Roses influence song. Um, when I hear that, I think um, Right Next Door to Hell, the, the song that opens 
use your illusion one. That's what I hear. Um, that scream at the beginning is very Axl Rose influence. You can tell that right there. The groove, the riff is killer. Awesome song, man. So that's number 10 for me. What's your number 10? Okay, number 10 for me is going to be Blinded in Chains. <laughs> nice. It's off the City of Evil album. Sweet. And it's just, uh, again, can I cuss on this show? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, it's badass. <laughs> All right. <laughs> The badass song is just hitting you of all, all the freaking just the rev just going crazy on drum work. There's even a drum break for him in that song where he's like, doo -doo 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 -doo. I can't I can't play drums. All right. <laughs> but it's just a part in there where it's just awesome. And every time I hear that, I'm like, I geek out and it gets goosebumps every time I listen to that song because it just it, it picks you up. It gets you going. And then when that rev drum break happens, I'm like, ah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Man. Cool. I'll have to go back and listen to that one. I'm not as familiar with the catalog as you are. But um, I definitely want to check that one out now. So uh, my okay. number song, my number uh, nine is going to be a song called Radiant. It's a little bit of a deep cut, I, cut, I think, but I really do enjoy the song. I love the punk aspect of it. I love um, the old school sound, the old school metal of it. So, uh, yeah, number nine for me, Radiant. Awesome. Number nine, I have Not Ready to Die. This is a, <laughs> this is a song that was on a Call of Duty video game. Um <laughs> And I listened to it, and that's always kind of, kind of the cool thing. I know uh, Shadows loves playing that game, so they, they've incorporated them into it. They even had their characters in the actual video game. I played that video game just because of that, by the way, because I'm not a Call of Duty guy. But the yeah. song is just awesome, and, it, and it's got this great vibe to it. It's just, you know, it's one of those event songs that just goes in different ways, but it's mostly just a rocking song. Sweet. Yeah. Nice, man. Good call. Good call. The next one I'm a big fan of because I feel like whenever, anytime I'm writing with in your car and your playlist is on i feel like this one comes on i'm like oh yeah i freaking love that song um but it's sidewinder another one that's nice good awesome paced song that's just killer um old school classic avenge sevenfold is is what i tune in for when i say i tune in for avenge sevenfold for certain things it's a song like that man so yeah sidewinder that's my number eight all right number eight i have second heartbeat off of the wick and the fallen album yeah uh, just a, you know, good, awesome vibe song. I love the way that it blends in and out of the screaming into the singing part. Especially, yes. mostly, I had like a little add-on here in parentheses or whatever. <laughs> of um, I love the live version on live in the LBC. That's where I really started to begin to love that song. Is when I heard it there, and then okay. going back and listening to it on the album, I'm like, oh, this is so freaking awesome. And I just love the way they put that song together. So at number eight, I have Second Heartbeat. Cool, man. Um, all right, so the rest of my um, the rest of my list is going to be the uh, the bangers, the singles, and stuff like that. Um, kicking okay. off that list is uh, Shepherd of Fire. Man, yeah. love that song. Um, as as a song to kick off a concert set, um, you know, with the fire going off in the background, that that riff is absolutely killer. Um, it's from that Hail to the King album, which I dig, man. Straight ahead rock and roll, and uh, I mean, I really dig that song. The guitar solo is so good in that as well. So. Uh, Shepherd of Fire, that's number seven for me. Yep, kicks off that album, and I saw them kick off a show with that song live, and it is awesome. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what, number seven? Yeah. Uh, number seven, I have Critical Acclaim off of the <laughs> self-titled album. That is the song that kicks off the album, and it gives you the exact vibe you want with that whole yeah. album, starting off away, right away from the freaking keyboard, making that sinister sound into him just screaming his head off and then just going crazy. It's like, okay, that's a Vince Sevenfold right there. Right? Yeah. And it kicks off the live in the LBC live album as well. And it's like, this is just yeah. freaking madness right away. Give mm -hmm. it to me. Love this. <laughs> yep. Cool, man. So um, that is actually my number six is going to be critical. Okay. <laughs> um, that double bass work by the Rev in it is the, the hooker for me. The beginning of that song, the, the jump straight into your face heaviness is um what i mean after that beautiful organ sound that they have going on um it's just so much fun to me and uh, i love i feel like i feel like it's one of those i'm going to put on immediately to kick off a playlist that i'm going to have for been seven folds either that one maybe shepherd of fire or my number one which you will see uh -huh. a little i wonder if we're going to have a lot that's similar here we'll find out but that is my number six is uh critical acclaim i don't think we are we may have two more that are similar and okay. one of those is coming up right now for me at number six and that is unholy confessions off of the Wake in the Fallen album. Again, yeah. great uh, great back and forth of the screaming and singing in this one. Um, I, I love the way he starts off like, I'll try, and then just freaking goes blasting through there. Uh -huh. And just the Rev's drum work, that little snare hit that he does in there every single time is just, again, the goosebumps. I'm like, this freaking <laughs> rules every single time that song comes on. So I'm like, Wake, uh, Unholy Confessions, there you go, number six. Oh, so that is uh, that was your number six? Yeah. 
that's my number five. So nice. since, you just, <laughs> since you just talked about it, I'm not going to say anything else. But the, one of the main reasons I love that song is the breakdown at the end. Just, I mean, you can you see the circle pits coming. You know that yeah. break is about to hit, and it is so tasty, man. I just love, I love that, man. It's so good. It's uh, it's got a good bite to it. So, um, unholy confession, man. That's my number five. Man, yeah. he keeps killing all my good job, dude. Nice number five for me. We're going back to the self-titled album. Okay. Uh, and it's a song called Lost, which wow. I, I the thing I dig about this song is the way it starts. It starts off with the two, starts off with Gates and Zachy Vengeance playing guitar back and forth with each other. Uh -huh. So they're both playing kind of the same thing, but it just keeps building back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And then finally kicks into the song. Probably more of a poppy rock kind of song because there is some auto-tune vocals in it. Okay. But again, that's what I go back to with the Vince Fold and what I love about them is they're not afraid to make any kind of song. And it's still a rocking song, but it's still the guitar work in that song and just the the not afraid to do their thing is what I like about that song. Cool, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one, man. Um, he said it's called Lost? Yep. Okay, cool. I'm going to check that out. Um, coming in number four for me is going to be the song that introduced me to the band. It's always what I'm going to think about first whenever I think about Avenged Sevenfold, and that is Backcountry. Um, I mean, that, that whole album, City of Evil, is awesome. Uh, my number one song comes from that um, album as well. But uh, number four, um, Back Country, man. I really love, I love the harmonizing guitar playing that they do in that song. It's just so good. Love it, man. Yeah. All right, what you got? All right, number four for me is Off of City of Evil as well. But it is the song that I hinted at earlier. It is a song ball called Strength of the World. Ah, nice. The first time I heard that song, I'm like, I love this freaking band. Because what you're giving me right here is something I haven't heard before at that point. Because again, glam metal guy you know yeah. glam metal is just fun poppy rock good time stuff it's not theatrical it's theatrical but it's not like you know you know what i'm saying it's not like yeah. you know this you know soothing kind of vibe that goes into just blowing your head off with the music <laughs> that's what this song is it just it starts off so melodical and just so theatrical and you just sit there and you're kind of vibing and swaying with it and then all of a sudden they just start rocking your socks off you're like <laughs> all right, I freaking love this band. You know, so that was a song that officially hooked me. I heard their their singles and all that off the album, but once I heard that song, I'm like, okay, I'm in love with this band. Sweet man, that's awesome. Good pick, good pick. Um, number three, I think is what we're at now, right? Number three. Yes. Okay, uh, number three for me is uh, Nightmare. What can I say other than the double bass work by Mike Portnoy? Um, the uh, the it has poppy elements of it, but it also has these really heavy moments of it. I feel like it's a beautiful mixture of all the different styles that they can play and they can master. So, um, so nightmare, that's number three for me. Good return for them after questions of what was going to happen after yeah. losing the room. Uh, number three for me is a deep cut. Nice. This is called dancing dead. This is off of an album called diamonds in the rough. Um, <laughs> it's an under under known album, unless you're like deep into a Vince sevenfold. This is, this is still rev era, but it, it was, hooked on it came with the live in the lbc dvd so it was like a cd that was attached to that dvd and for the longest time it was never released anywhere on streaming service or anything until a couple years ago they finally did that and that had some more bonus songs in there from like the nightmare album and all that and they kind of released it but i i just remember hearing that song for the first time and loving again the vibe of it like they they got a good vibes to the song and just the 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 musical aspect they put in that song again it's one of those build-ups at the beginning it's kind of in the background, you know, just kind of building up. You can hear the music just rising, and then all yeah. of a sudden they start going, and it's just a good um, funk vibe to it. I think funk oh, might so not be the right word, but there's like a there's like a groovy vibe to it. Sweet man, cool. I dig that. Um, you'll have to send me your list because I want to check out all of these songs um, okay. that I'm not with. Um, coming in number two for me um, was was one that you hinted at earlier. It's something that you always want to go back and look at occasionally just to watch what the rev does in the studio. Dude takes a sip of a cup of coffee sits down and writes a fucking masterpiece like it's uh, like the song almost easy um what can i say about that freaking song that that needs to be said i mean just the the, the double ride hits or the double yeah. uh, bell hits on the on the crash symbols oh my god man that is so freaking awesome um you know, it's hard for me not to put that number one but there's one more that i really really dig um <laughs> but almost easy such a good song um the way that it changes from fast paced um the guitar solo when it's really 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 awesome um, so I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, that song is, is killer, man. So almost easy number two for me. 
Okay. Number two for me, um, I love the word that you just use, masterpiece, because I'm going to steal uh -huh. that word as well. This is my Rev masterpiece, and a lot of people consider this Rev's masterpiece. We listen to it on the ride to uh, your show. It's a song called A Little Piece of Heaven. Ah. Now, this song is not for the weak at heart. <laughs> um, parental discretion is advised, especially when watching the music video for this one. But it's again, it's the what you hope for with or what you got from that band, and hopefully they'll do more of. Again, mm -hmm. this is the Rev's masterpiece, so we don't know if they really do this stuff anymore, but. Yeah, so theatrical, very Tim Burton -y vibe to it. Wow. Very, you oh, know, I know what song you're talking about now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, weird freaking lyrics, dark lyrics, you know. But it, it's a it's a wild story. I've always called it. Motley Crue has a song called "Sick Love Song." This is an actual sick love song, and it's it's just it's insane what they get away with in the song. And uh -huh. what I mean by that is the way they blend all of these sounds together. Like you got choir going on, you got orchestra going on you got metal going on you've got you know three or four different people singing at once it's like this is just incredible from start that's, to finish that's like, that's, in it right it has that horn section yeah. going yeah okay cool yeah which has which is funny because right after you hear those horns you hear some awesome double bass work going on it's like oh what's going on yeah. here this it's pulling you different directions that is a great choice man i want to listen to that right now um Okay. Be careful with that music video, though. Just saying, you know, <laughs> I didn't even know there was a music video for it, so I'm going to watch it immediately. Hey, you're talking to a guy that listens to Steel Panther. But you're talking about a wild video. Glory Hole is probably one of the most obscene videos yeah, I've ever yeah, seen. True. <laughs> it's true. But, um, but let's let's talk about my number one. Um, if I'm going to – if somebody's walking up to me and they're like, hey, you listen to metal, um, what do you think of Vince Sevenfold? Um, the first song I'm going to play for them – is uh the beast and the harlot because what the, i mean that song has everything from that from the way it starts to that drum intro to those drum fills all the way around that song to me is just um you know hey wake me up it's monday morning let's get it let's get this let's get this work day kicking off the right way um it's gonna be beast and the harlot so um so yeah that is my number one song it's my favorite Avenged sevenfold song no doubt that's that's my favorite man what do you what do yeah. you got at number one. Great songs. And I'm glad you brought up the, the singles because I don't really have any on my <laughs> list. Not because I don't like them. I do really enjoy those songs, but it's just yeah. these, these other songs that just grab me. And that's exactly what my number one is. It was a single. It was, I, I think it was a big single for them. Uh, Afterlife. Um, Afterlife is just, it's one of those songs, especially when the, you know you got that violin rocking. Like, ah. Uh, <laughs> Like, cause that's, that's what I, again, I love about the band is they'll throw anything into their music. And they're like, let's just mash this all together and see how it works. Now this song doesn't go crazy rocking uh -huh. on it, but with the violin, it's got a rock vibe to it. And like two really good guitar solos in it. It's like, <laughs> freaking, this is one of those songs that I would throw out there for a Vince Temple. I'm like, oh, you haven't heard it here. Check this out. This is, uh -huh. this is what you got. They'll give you a rocking vibe but they'll also throw some orchestra stuff in there and some meaningful lyrics. Like this song, not to bring it down, but this song has helped me through a lot of dark times. I'll throw that song on. Like the, the idea of the song and from what I get from the lyrics is of somebody who died too early and they, they're they pleading with God to give them another chance at life. And, oh. you know, I've been in those dark places myself and, you know, want to come out of it. So I, I just love that song. I love the story of it. I love the music of it. Like everything about it is just the event song for me. Nice, man. Cool, man. I'm glad that. I love the inspiration that that song has for you. Because guess what, man? You're my, you're my brother, man. I'm glad you're still here, dude. I'm digging it. Um, but uh, this was awesome, man. I love talking about Avenged Sevenfold. I felt like it wouldn't be right to talk about them without you. So thank yeah. you, sir, for being on my show. I think this is the third time you've been on my show. I, I haven't been on your show. No big deal. No big deal I haven't been on your show. But, to um, be fair, that Haunted Mansion thing we did was my show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever. Fair enough. Uh, but that voice and uh, that awesome head that you see floating there is Mr. Review It, Rob. Um, pitch your show, sir, because people need to be checking it out. Uh, yeah, the Review It, Rob show. It is a movie show hosted by a movie nerd talking about movie nerdness. Um, basically, I gather news based on movies, always horror news and DC news on the show, because those are two things I love the most. And... You know, I'll throw in some other pieces throughout the realm that I think is kind of interesting and throw them in there. And always a spoiler-free review on the show. Try to keep it as new as possible. Uh, so last week I did Scream, and mm -hmm. this week we'll be doing uh, Shazam! Fury of the Gods, which I really want to talk about because the hate that movie's getting does not make sense whatsoever. But yeah, I don't, what I don't do you do? DC gets hate all the time for some reason. I got you, man. Yeah, that was – um, 
I, I freaking love it, man. But I mean, you knew I was going to love it anyways, but um, I thought it was awesome. Um, but yeah, guys, Mr. Review, Rob, thank you, brother, so much for joining me, man. I love all of your Chucky stuff you're going on in the background. Your background is looking really good. Uh, so I mean, I mean, this maybe this is a teaser that if you go video podcast, this might be what people need to be checking out. I don't even know if you can see all the Chucky stuff. I mean, you got the blanket over here. There's the pillow somewhere over here. <laughs> there, the big Chucky and a lot of other Chucky somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, but I really do enjoy your show. I love the um, – how do, you, how do you say it? The mandatory DC and horror talk. Because um, yep. that's what I want to hear, so I love tuning in for that. And I'm a little biased, but that uh, intro song you have there, that features me on the cowbell. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I always look forward to that too, man. But um, thank you again so much for hanging out with me and going to my show this weekend, man. It was a good time. We had fun in Myrtle Beach. Um, yeah, thanks for having me on, man. Again, we keep teasing these hangouts. We got to do some uh, – might have might have to sniff some tea and uh, you know see what's going on there. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Um, one more funny thing I want to bring up about, up about this past weekend – is um the show of Myrtle Beach we played talking about Mortal Kombat. This is random. This is so freaking random. But um thinking of Mortal Kombat's all the only thing I could relate it to because it was so freaking windy. My symbols were literally coming at me like Kung Lao was flinging his hat at me. It was <laughs> yeah. bad. I had to take my symbol symbol stands down. It was wild, man. But I had a good time and I appreciate that you were there, man. So it was a good time. That was a good time. That was a wild experience. Um I kept looking at the drums. I'm like, this is this is gonna be something, <laughs> you know. We had this like huge freaking inflatable, freaking what beer bottle or something over there, and I'm like, <laughs> the Jameson gonna... bottle because it was it was like, uh, St. Patrick's Day. Like I remember the first thing I said to you was like, all right, don't oh neaters this. Let's <laughs> you know, let's let's make sure you get through this without any falling symbols or anything. Yeah, they, it kept happening. So whatever, we had a good time. Um, this was a good time on the show, man. Avenged Sevenfold rocks. You rock, man. So I appreciate you so much for uh, hanging out on the show, and uh. You know how we, we rock too, man. Thank you for keeping the metal out there and giving me some bands to listen to. You know, <laughs> you know, it was nice to throw some stuff in there. Yeah, man. Hey, thank you for listening. Thank you, everybody, that listens to us here on the Throw Me Podcast Network. Um, Rio Rob is still the champion. Uh, March Madness just happened on our page. I lost first round, but I knew that was coming anyways. So, you did um, all right. You did yeah, all right. That was a good episode. Go back and watch that if you want to see me. Uh, if you want to see me struggle a little bit, but it was a good time. Uh, Throw Me Podcast Network. We have some great shows on this network. Our YouTube is uh, full of just hilarious, you know, a lot of good information, um, great reviews, man. So the the page is chock full of stuff. Come check us out. Like, give us some love, a like and support, and subscribe and all that good stuff, man. But as for this week's show, that is a wrap. I'm Tombstone Josh. That is Review at Rob. Good time, man. And always remember, stay metal. We see you next week, man.